I just lost all respect for ARK and Kathy Wood, and I think they are tricking investors. This is just my opinion, and I've been a fan of ARK for a long time, and I thought that even when the performance was bad and it was dropping, that they actually weren't intentionally trying to trick anybody, but my this just changed everything and changed my opinion. They came out with this new venture fund that's eligible for all US investors, investors with as little as $500. And they say it's a cost effective alternative. They say it has a 2.75% management fee, which is extremely high for even for venture. And they say it's more cost effective than a traditional two and 20 fee, which is 2% management and 20% carried interest on performance. I'm gonna talk about why I think they're actually tricking investors with this and intentionally not telling the full story, just my opinion. And then they say liquidity for an illiquid asset class, but that's not even true either. They say, unlike traditional VC funds, which lock up capital for years, ARK's evergreen public-private crossover fund offers clients partial liquidity through quarterly redemptions. Well, there's fine print and there's a chance that you can't even redeem your shares quarterly like they're laying out here. And they're making no mention of that right here, obviously. They talk about it in the disclosures, which I'll get to. I'm just extremely disappointed in ARC. I, I just, I, I think that, like I've now changed my opinion and I think that they're just being downright deceiving and tricking people, right? So first of all, let's talk about, um, overall performance, right? Like there's a level of focus here that uh, I think you would need, right? And to me, where their focus should be is on improving these public funds, not expanding into private and new investment vehicles that are gonna take more time and attention, right? Like fix what you're already doing and do a good job at that before you get into something else. It really just seems like they're just scrambling and trying to take as much money from investors as possible. If you wanna look year to date, ARC, is down, the K is down 60%, ARC W is down 61, ARC G is down 40. I mean, it's just horrible, right? And yes, the broader market is down, but even over five years, and I'm gonna compare these to just the S&P 500 and you'll be surprised, over five years, they're basically all trailing the S&P 500 and uh, like a simple dividend fund as well, right? So problem number one is just how do you have the audacity to move into this new investment vehicle when what your primary job is and what you've built your firm on is struggling so horribly. That's the first thing that makes me mad, right? And sure, that part's not illegal by any means, but it's like, if you're truly trying to serve investors, do a good job at what you're already doing instead of just trying to take more money from people. Second of all, this venture fund, right? There, I've got so many problems with this. There's a 2.75% management fee, but your total expense ratio is 4.22%. Are you kidding me? You're gonna take 4.22% with the track record that you have from everyday investors, and you're gonna think that that's okay. Let's see what you're getting for that 4.75% fee. Well, right now you're getting 30% almost in cash, okay? That might be because they haven't deployed it yet, but whatever, you can own that on your own and pay 0% for that. Then you're getting 3% in Roblox, 3% in Zoom, and 3% in, in, in NVIDIA. You can own each of those individual stocks and pay a 0% fee on them. All right, let's get into the prospectus and the fine print of this fund, and this is what really pisses me off. It has no operating history. There's not expected to be any secondary trading market in shares. Okay, so we're talking about some of the risks. Unlisted closed-end fund. Unlike an investor in many closed-end funds, shareholders should not expect to be able to sell their shares regardless of how the fund performs, and investment in the fund is considered illiquid. Wait a second. On your front page, it says liquidity for an illiquid asset class. Deceiving. There's no assurance that distributions paid by the fund will be maintained or that dividends will be paid at all. Unlike many closed-end funds, shares are not listed on any securities exchange. The fund intends, intends to provide liquidity through quarterly offers to repurchase a limited amount of the fund shares, expected to be 5% of the fund's shares outstanding per quarter. So there's no guarantee, the way I'm reading this, there's no guarantee you'll be able to actually get money back but at a maximum, the maximum you should expect per quarter is up to 5%. That's how I'm reading that. I could be wrong, but that's not that's not liquid for investors, right? All right, now let's look at this fee explainer, which I think is also intentionally tricking investors. Just my thoughts. Has a total expense ratio of 4.22%. It includes a 2.75% management fee, 0.65% in distribution fees, and an additional 0.82% in other operating fees. Any investor in ARC Venture Fund can expect to pay the 4.22% in full. So why does it consider a 2.75% management fee and not the total annual fund expense ratio? 
All funds charge additional expenses. Arc Venture funds additional expenses are similar to other funds. I didn't even look into that, whatever. They're, that's probably not even true, but maybe it is. So for simplicity, we would like to illustrate how our management fee might be more cost-effective as compared to a two and 20 model, which refers to 2% management fee and 20% carried interest. Basically, what that means is you pay a 2% management fee no matter what, and then you pay 20% on the, essentially the outperformance of the gains if the fund outperforms, right? And and that is a lot, right? That is expensive, but you're only paying that if the fund is outperforming. And I think it's if it's outperforming the benchmark. I'm not sure on that, but it's at least if at the very worst, you pay that if the fund makes money, right? So they're claiming that over 10 years, if the fund 4.5X is in value, which, oh, by the way, you may not even be able to get your money out, who knows, then you would pay 40% higher fees under the two and 20 structure than under their structure. But what they don't mention anywhere in this, at least not that I saw, is that on a regular basis, without them having any expectation or requirement to outperform or make any money whatsoever, you're paying 2.75% instead of 2%, which is what you pay in the two and 20 structure if a fund wasn't outperforming or wasn't making money. That is almost 40% higher than the expenses you'd pay if you owned a fund under the two and 20 structure. So sure, the two and 20 structure might be messed up and you pay a lot if the fund makes a lot of money and outperforms, but at least you only pay that if the fund outperforms. This, you have to pay ARC 2.75% no matter what, and you might not even be able to get your money back and take it out. So you might be stuck with that. Okay, they have a fact sheet, right? It talks about all the great things. They also have it compared to the, they have the venture fund, the S&P 500, the Russell 3000 growth, the NASDAQ, the MSCI, right? And none of it has any anything because they just started it. Well, Kathy, why don't you add ARC uh, ARKK and ARKQ on here so that people can see the track record of your fund's performance and how bad they are and your track record and your credibility compared to just the S&P 500 or the NASDAQ, right? You won't do it because you don't want people to see that. All right, and, and so finally, it's just, just back to like the audacity to do this. So I think they're tricking investors. They're not being as transparent, in my opinion, as they should be about the fee structure and the downside to that 2.75% management fee no matter what. They're also not being as transparent, in my opinion, as they should be about the illiquidity of this. And they're actually saying it's liquid, right? But then they came out with this bad, their performance doesn't justify them having the right to have people give them their money. I mean, sure, people can if they want, but I will never give them my money. I will never recommend any of my friends do or anybody ever again. I've told friends that I think ARC is great in the past. I don't trust them at all whatsoever, and I don't think I ever will. They came out with this bad ideas report talking about um, how essentially just bad it was to invest in something boring like the S&P 500 index or banks or whatever. It came out on October 14th, 2020. Okay, let's remember this. Essentially, it's just saying why investing in the S&P 500 will, is more stressful and will give you more risk and all this stuff as um, innovative companies disrupt the companies that are in the S&P 500 and they use Wells Fargo and banks being disrupted by PayPal and Square and stuff like that. Well, this is a, a chart of the performance since that the day that report came out. And again, I've underperformed. Bad performance is one thing, but the audacity to have this type of crappy performance and then come out with this venture fund and then not even be totally truthful about it, in my opinion, uh, I just, I've got to point this out. Since that report came out, the risky underperforming, as they claim, Vanguard, S&P 500, the VU is up almost 8%. The Schwab U.S. Dividend Fund, boring company, all the boring stuff they said you should never buy, up almost 24%. ARKK, down 65%. ARKQ, down 30%. In my opinion, that's all you need to know to never be interested in investing in ARK again. Just my thoughts, not advice.